Hi, welcome back. I'm thankful that you are sticking with the program and have arrived at day number 345. May the Lord bless you real good today as we read Micah chapters 1 and 2, Isaiah 50, and our first reading in Revelation 3. So let's turn to Micah chapter 1. The name Micah is a shortened form of Micaiah, which means, Who is like Yahweh? A different Micaiah, the son of Imla, served as a prophet in the northern kingdom during the reign of King Ahab of Israel, who reigned in Israel from 874 to 853 B.C. This Micah prophesied during the reigns of the Judean kings Jotham, 750 to 732 B.C., Ahaz, 732 to 715 B.C., and Hezekiah, 715 to 686 B.C. This makes him a late 8th century contemporary of Isaiah. While Isaiah was ministering in Jerusalem, perhaps Micah was more of a country prophet. Amos and Hosea were preaching at the same time in the northern kingdom. Micah's message is similar to that of Amos, and Micah spoke at a time when conditions in Judah were much like those in the northern kingdom while Amos was preaching. Both prophets denounced social sins and the unfair treatment of the poor by the rich. The northern kingdom was taken into captivity during Micah's lifetime, fulfilling Amos' prophecies. Micah contains three notable passages about Christ. First, Bethlehem will produce the ultimate ruler, the information which was quoted to Herod in Matthew chapter 2. Second, Christ will be the king. And third, Christ will reign in righteousness over the whole earth. The verse references for these are in the episode notes. Micah chapter 1 During the time that Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah were kings of Judah, the Lord gave this message to Micah, who was from the town of Moresheth. The Lord revealed to Micah all these things about Samaria and Jerusalem. Heading, A Lament for Samaria and Jerusalem Micah is speaking. Hear this, all you nations. Listen to this, all who live on earth. The Sovereign Lord will testify against you. Listen, he speaks from his heavenly temple. The Lord is coming from his holy place. He will come down and walk on the tops of the mountains. Then the mountains will melt under him like wax in a fire. They will pour down into the valleys like water pouring down a hill. All this will happen because the people of Israel have sinned and rebelled against God. Who is to blame for Israel's rebellion? Samaria, the capital city itself. Who is guilty of idolatry in Judah? Jerusalem itself. So the Lord says, I will make Samaria a pile of ruins in the open country, a place for planting grapevines. I will pour the rubble of the city down into the valley and will lay bare the city's foundations. All its precious idols will be smashed to pieces. Everything given to its temple prostitutes will be destroyed by fire, and all its images will become a desolate heap. Samaria acquired these things for its fertility rites, and now her enemies will carry them off for temple prostitutes elsewhere. Then Micah said, Because of this I will mourn and lament. To show my sorrow I will walk around barefoot and naked. I will howl like a jackal and wail like an ostrich. 
Samaria's wounds cannot be healed, and Judah is about to suffer in the same way. Destruction has reached the gates of Jerusalem itself, where my people live. Heading The Enemy Approaches Jerusalem Don't tell our enemies in Goth about our defeat. Don't let them see you weeping. People of Beth Leafra, show your despair by rolling in the dust. You people of Shafir, go into exile, naked and ashamed. Those who live in Za'anan do not dare come out of their city. When you hear the people of Bethesel mourn, you will know that there is no refuge there. The people of Maroth anxiously wait for relief because the Lord has brought disaster close to Jerusalem. You that live in Lachish, hitch the horses to your chariots. You imitated the sins of Israel and so caused Jerusalem to sin. And now, people of Judah, say goodbye to the town of Moresheth Gath. The kings of Israel will get no help from the town of Akzib. People of Marisha, the Lord will hand you over to an enemy who is going to capture your town. The leaders of Israel will go and hide in the cave at Adullam. People of Judah, cut off your hair in mourning for the children you love. Make yourself as bald as vultures, because your children will be taken away from you into exile. Micah chapter 2 Heading The Fate of Those Who Oppress the Poor How terrible it will be for those who lie awake and plan evil. When morning comes, as soon as they have the chance, they do the evil they planned. When they want fields, they seize them. When they want houses, they take them. No one's family or property is safe. And so the Lord says, I am planning to bring disaster on you, and you will not be able to escape it. You are going to find yourselves in trouble, and then you will not walk so proudly anymore. When that time comes, people will use this story about you as an example of disaster and they will sing this song of despair about your experience. We are completely ruined. The Lord has taken our land away and given it to those who took us captive. So then, when the time comes for the land to be given back to the Lord's people, there will be no share for any of you. The people preach at me and say, don't preach at us. Don't preach about all that. God is not going to disgrace us. Do you think the people of Israel are under a curse? Has the Lord lost his patience? Would he really do such things? Doesn't he speak kindly to those who do right? The Lord replies, You attack my people like enemies. Men return from battle, thinking they are safe, but there you are, waiting to steal the coats off their backs. You drive the women of my people out of the homes they love, and you have robbed their children of my blessings forever. Get up and go. There is no safety here anymore. Your sins have doomed this place to destruction. These people want the kind of prophet who goes around full of lies and deceit and says, I prophesy that wine and liquor will flow for you. But I will gather you together, all you people of Israel that are left. I will bring you together like sheep returning to the fold. Like a pasture full of sheep, your land will once again be filled with many people. Micah speaks. God will open the way for them and lead them out of exile. They will break out of the city gates and go free. 
their king, the Lord himself, will lead them out. Let's open now to Isaiah 50. As we heard yesterday, Isaiah 49 includes these words that are quoted in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. At just the right time I will respond to you. On the day of salvation I will help you. And these next words are frequently repeated by the Lord elsewhere, therefore important. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who trust in me will never be put to shame. Isaiah 50 The Lord says, Do you think I sent my people away like a man who divorces his wife? Where, then, are the papers of divorce? Do you think I sold you into captivity like a man who sells his children as slaves? No, you went away because of your sins. You were sent away because of your crimes. Why did my people fail to respond when I went to them to save them? Why did they not answer when I called? Am I too weak to save them? I can dry up the sea with a command and turn rivers into a desert so that the fish in them die for lack of water. I can make the sky turn dark as if it were in mourning for the dead. Heading The Obedience of the Lord's Servant Isaiah Speaks The Sovereign Lord has taught me what to say so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning he makes me eager to hear what he's going to teach me. The Lord has given me understanding, and I have not rebelled or turned away from him. I bared my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me, when they pulled out the hairs of my beard and spit in my face. But their insults cannot hurt me, because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced, for God is near, and he will prove me innocent. Does anyone dare bring charges against me? Let us go to court together. Let him bring his accusation. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? All my accusers will disappear. They will vanish like moth-eaten cloth. All of you that honor the Lord and obey the words of his servant, the path you walk may be dark indeed, but trust in the Lord. Rely on your God. All of you that plot to destroy others will be destroyed by your own plots. The Lord himself will make this happen. You will suffer a miserable fate. Let's open now to Revelation chapter 3. The churches of Pergamum and Theatira in chapter 2 were enduring and remaining loyal to Jesus but both were allowing the corruption of false teaching that promoted adultery and idolatry. Jesus warned of severe punishments, including death for those who failed to repent, and also wonderful promises to those who are victorious. One of those promises that I'll read now is so amazing. It shows how intimately Jesus knows us and how his rewards will be appropriate for each of us. And I will give to each one a white stone, and on the stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. Revelation chapter 3 To the angel of the church in Sardis write, This is the message from the one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. 
I know what you're doing. I know that you have the reputation of being alive, even though you are dead. So wake up and strengthen what you still have before it dies completely. For I find that what you have done is not yet perfect in the sight of my God. Remember then what you were taught and what you heard. Obey it and turn from your sins. If you do not wake up, I will come upon you like a thief, and you will not even know the time when I will come. But a few of you there in Sardis have kept your clothes clean. You will walk with me clothed in white, because you are worthy to do so. Those who win the victory will be clothed like this in white, and I will not remove their names from the book of the living. In the presence of my Father and of his angels, I will declare openly that they belong to me. If you have ears, then, listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, I am the one who is holy and true. My message to you is this. I have the key that belonged to David, and when I open a door, no one can close it. And when I close a door, no one can open it. I know what you do. I know that you have a little power. You have followed my teaching and have been faithful to me. I have opened a door in front of you which no one can close. Listen, as for that group that belongs to Satan, those liars who claim that they are Jews but are not, I will make them come and bow down at your feet. They will all know that I love you. Because you have kept my command to endure, I will also keep you safe from the time of trouble which is coming upon the world to test all the people on earth. I am coming soon. Keep safe what you have, so that no one will rob you of your victory prize. I will make those who are victorious pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which will come down out of heaven from my God. I will also write on them my new name. If you have ears, then... Listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we worship you as the one who has perfect control and knowledge of the churches. You have perfect unity and partnership in all the work of the Holy Spirit. We praise you that you rule right now as king, as the promised descendant of David. So you alone have the power to open and shut all doors of opportunity. How we long to be faithful like the Church of Philadelphia, and hear you say to us that you have opened a door in front of us and no one can close that door. Yes, Lord, please open such doors for us. And please help us to so live and so speak that even our harshest enemies will come and confess that it is obvious that you are real and that you love us. Lord, for spiritual deadness and indifference in our own lives, may we follow the instructions you gave to the church in Sardis. Increase our desire for heaven and for making certain that our names are found in the book of the living. 
how we desire to be acknowledged by you publicly before the Father and the angels. Give us your everlasting mark of ownership on us, your own new name. May we also have the permanent right of access to come into your most holy place at the center of heaven.